thanks to uh, Ned Lamont's eviction moratorium. This tenant lived here since January of 2020, rent-free. And we finally were able to get him out with the help of the marshals a few days ago. Dave, welcome to the Tennis from Hell show, brother. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I never even heard of Tennis from Hell show. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do, man. Uh, we talk to uh, folks like you uh, about some of their worst tenant experiences. And holy shit, bro. What the fuck did you do to piss this guy off? <laughs> oh, man. You want the whole story or you want the short story? No, give me the whole story, bro. This is uh, like you guys could all see the, the content. We have the footage and the pictures rolling. <laughs> this is literally some of the worst stuff I've ever seen, bro. What happened? So I normally screen really well. Right. And uh, I've gotten that feedback from, you know, landlords all over the place. Like it's your own fault. You didn't screen the guy because he has tons of felonies and this and that. Okay. What happened was I, uh, I had a contractor who worked for me, a sub, and uh, she hired this guy who was a felon and uh, he was working for a little bit. And, um, you know, what did he do? Uh, what was the felony? Do you know? Um, he's got a few of them. He's got sex offense. He's got uh, burglary, larceny, first degree, like, you know, fairly bad stuff. Not, um, you know, he wasn't shoplifting. Okay, so he's a leave it to beaver kind of guy. Okay, he's just an all around good citizen. <laughs> yeah. So she says, hey, he's working hard. He's, you know, he's, he's out, of, he's been out of jail. He needs a second chance. He has felonies and he has terrible credit. Can you give him a chance? And so he was referred by my contractor, his boss, and that's how he got in the apartment. I really do screen. Yes, I had to take some embarrassment for this because I let the guy in and he had a record like that. Um, he's paying for a while, a year you know, maybe a little more. And uh, he starts flipping cars in the driveway. And it's a five, normally, I don't, I don't care how you make money on the side, but it's a five unit building with five parking spaces. He has three cars. The other tenants are complaining. Um, they're parking on the street. There's a winter parking ban in my city. Um, and so we're asking him do you, you, that you got to move the cars. You can't do it there. You got to find somewhere else where we must have asked him two dozen times because we, you know, we had a relationship with the guy two dozen times. He ignores us. He doesn't do it. Finally, we tow his car after like a couple months, more than a couple months. And then he was so mad about me towing his car that he never paid rent again. And that's how this started. Okay. And obviously, as I'm talking to you, we're coming out of the tail end of the coronavirus uh, stuff. So were, how long was he not paying rent? And because of the uh, eviction moratorium, you probably couldn't do anything, huh? That's exactly right. Uh, 14 months of rent he got me for. Oh, that son of a bitch, man. So where are we at today specifically as I talk to you? Because obviously you got him out. How did that transpire and exactly where are you at? So I'm in Connecticut and in Connecticut, um, I had filed for an eviction and I was about 60 days in, but evictions are tough in Connecticut. It takes about 90 days at least. And then the virus hit, had to stop. I was able to restart my eviction uh, because eventually my governor, Lamont, uh, in his infinite wisdom, decided to allow landlords to evict people who didn't pay rent prior to the virus starting after waiting like six months. But it wasn't really honest because the courts were closed. So he said, yes, you can file a notice to quit, but you can't go to court. So we had to wait for the courts to open. Once the court opened, we went to mediation. Eventually it took a long time to get a mediation. He refused to mediate. And then he stalled some more. And then he, we finally got a trial. And once I got the trial, he lost the trial. But even though he lost, they still gave him like another 45 days or something like that. Um, so it's another six months to evict on top of the six months that I couldn't file on top of the two months before the virus. And that's, uh, that's the time period. <laughs> all right. So after all that, in totality, it took you 14 months, right? From the time you stopped paying to the time you got possession of your property back. Yes? Yes, sir. All right. And then you go into the property and this is what you see? So my guys went in on, uh, he came with moving trucks. So he had moving trucks come to the property and, uh, and they loaded stuff and they left. So I thought, oh, great, he left. So I sent my guy over there on, I believe it was Friday. 
and on Friday, uh, he went into his place and saw that it was like partially trashed, not that bad. And um, the tenant came back, even though we had trucks come and go, he came back and said, no, they're gonna have to pay me to uh, get out of this place, get out of my apartment, get out of my apartment. Cause we hadn't had the marshal come yet to uh, haul him out. So we went back on Sunday. Um, cause again, we thought he left to change the locks and she shows up again. He's like, I'm gonna kick you down the stairs. He threatened my staff. And then on Monday, the marshal came and the marshal had to, you know, he was gone by the time the marshal got there on Monday morning. And so he was trashing that place all weekend. He had all weekend to mess around with that place. And Monday morning, that's what it looked like. Yeah, man. He, uh, he did a number. Now, uh, you know, just talking to you, I, I get the impression that you're actually a pretty seasoned landlord uh, and you've been doing this a while. So I get some flack, right? I get some flack. Uh, on some of the things I do or say here on Holton Wise TV because we run a very uh, fuck your excuses, I don't give a shit about giving you second chances kind of thing, right? Like, you know, people have their, oh, I'm a born again, I changed my life, blah, 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 blah. Everybody needs a chance. And, uh, you know, we, we take a very fuck all that stance, right? And we get some flack for it. But then, you know, we run into guys like you where it seems like you normally run that, but, you know, you had a weak moment. They tugged on your heartstrings a little bit, and, and this is what happened. Can you kind of just, like, touch on maybe that topic, you know, in a general form to me and, like, you know, how landlords should interact with their business and how, you know, there, no good deed goes unpunished, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Too often that's the case. You're right. Um so yeah, I screen pretty well. Um, I, I have been known to give second chances in the past, um, but the the eviction moratorium uh, has prevented any more second chances. If you come to me with poor credit, a previous eviction from I don't care how long ago, come to me with a felony for anything that's, you know, I mean, I'd probably still take you if you had like a DUI or something like that. But if you come to me with any of that, you know, it's too risky for me to take you now because I can't get rid of you. You can stay in my place for free for 14 months if it doesn't go well. And I'm just gonna wait for the next tenant to come along. And that's what the eviction moratorium does to hurt tenants. Cause there are some people that I think should have a second chance. I don't mind giving them, but not when I'm, if I'm wrong, it's gonna be $24,000 and internet fame for all the wrong reasons. And you know, it's uh, that's what, there's no second chances now. If you're, if you're a tenant who, you know, you're a good person, but you didn't pay some bills, you have poor credit and, you know, maybe you got a misdemeanor for shoplifting from five years ago when you're doing something stupid, you know, like it doesn't mean you should be homeless, but how are you going to get an apartment now with these eviction moratoriums? You're not getting one now. You're stuck. I don't know what you're going to do. It's a, it's a very tough, tough situation. And, you know, the way they keep extending it, it feels like they're really just cutting off these people's options. Now, if we could uh, slightly shift gears, you said, you know, it's approximately 24,000 in damages. And of course you got your internet fame going on now. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I believe I saw that you said on uh, your Facebook page that this guy screwed this unit up so bad and made it so obvious that he was actually criminally charged with vandalism. Is that the case? Yes. So um, in Connecticut, uh, Intentional vandalism over $1,500 from a tenant to a landlord is a felony, class D felony. Um, they're still working on the warrant. The warrant isn't out yet, but the police said this is a really easy case. It's very obvious vandalism. He must have known it was a crime when he was doing it. He must have thought it was worth it. Um, we're not sure why he would think that, but um, yeah, he'll be arrested with a felony. The odds of him going back to prison because he is already a felon are, are reasonable, but it's not a guarantee. And we just got to cross our fingers and hope he goes back to jail where he belongs. Landlords across the state would like to thank you, Lamont. Good job. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.